How's it doing, everybody? It's me, your boy. Here. If Bedrock Edition were one of my plants, it would be done, so it wouldn't be doing well. It's been a minute since I've given Bedrock Edition any love, like, like, at all. Today, we reset that counter. In my opinion, tips and tricks are always good to know. Good news, if you like tips and tricks, today I have not one, not two, but actually 10 different Bedrock Edition tips and tricks. For the most part, these are all things that only work on the Bedrock Edition of the game. If you enjoy today's video, do me a big favor, smash like, subscribe, notification bell, gang, it's always joined. This first tip should help you out right away in your world. So as soon as you jump into a new world, you have a couple things in mind. Of course, you're going to cut down a tree, start getting materials, all that type of thing. But bed. Bed is also big. Now, right off the bat, when you start a new world, you're going to want to find three sheep of the same color and take them out so you can craft a bed. Because everybody knows that if the three pieces of wool aren't all the same color, the bed, it's not going to work. On Java Edition, you can only re-dye white wool. On better edition, however, that's not the case here because wool can be re-dyed as many times as you'd like, no matter the color. So check this out, red wool that I just colored, now it's light gray, and then we realized that that was an absolute mistake. So now it's red again. It's actually a really, really nice mechanic. In the grand scheme of things, on a large scale, very expensive, but early on, potentially, absolutely essential. It looks like that all worked out perfectly, mathematically, in our favor. I uh, have to be honest, I'm not sure what I meant by that last part, but it's fine. Moving on. Flowers. Flowers are pretty nice. It's a pretty known fact that you can use bone meal on the too high flowers to get even more too high flowers. By too high flowers, we're talking, of course, lilacs, rose bushes, peonies, and sunflowers. On better edition, however, the bone meal flower stuff doesn't stop there. Check this out. If you bone meal the one high flowers, more one high flowers will grow around the original one if there's space. And by space, I mean grass blocks. That's literally all you need. And let's see if we can get lucky here. When you bone meal peonies on better edition, sometimes it's a little bit of a bug. You can actually get dandelions as well, which is really, really interesting. It does also work in the reverse way. Sometimes when you bone meal dandelions, you'll get poppies. This flower duplication mechanic is so cool and potentially insanely useful if you need to dye a lot of things and need more dye. I really, really wish this were on Java. What do all of these things that I'm placing down right now have in common? Think about it for a second. Like, all of them, including those ones and even the enchanting table as well. What do they all have in common? Think about what they're made out of. These 10 blocks right here are all made out of some type of stone or something strong. So over here in these things case, we have lots of cobblestone. The cauldron, the hopper, iron, that's pretty strong. And then finally, the enchanting table, literally built out of four pieces of obsidian and diamonds, insanely strong materials. Let's say I was early on in a world and somehow I've obtained an enchantment table all legit. Like, like I don't have a pickaxe, but I have this enchanting table. Then, let's say I placed it down and I wanted to get that enchanting table back. Well, to take a look at the enchanting table and start mining the enchanting table. It's going to take a long time, as you can see right here, but eventually, if you're patient, you're going to get the enchanting table back by hand. And that's going to be the case for all of these other things too. The furnace, the stone cutter, anything here. The stuff is built out of literal stone, but apparently you're strong enough to break this by hand. Um, it's insanely, insanely strange. I mean, check this out right here. Blast Furnace, that's a pretty strong thing. Nope, not so strong anymore. It all works in vanilla Minecraft without any glitches at all. It takes a lot of time, but it does technically work. Not gonna lie, patrols are pretty cool, but also potentially insanely, insanely annoying. Maybe you're just trying to build in peace. Maybe you have a village that you absolutely don't want to get raided. Well, if you play on easy difficulty, this next trick is for you. Because, did you know, the patrol spawning can actually be entirely eliminated on easy difficulty by placing light down. If the light level is above 7 in an area, a patrol simply cannot and will not spawn. Now, to be clear, this light level is going to have to be done manually by hand it can't be the sun the sun won't stop patrol spawning but things like torches and lanterns they will definitely stop patrol spawning don't try this on normal or hard difficulty however because it doesn't work this is an absolutely ineffective way to defend a village on anything other than easy difficulty on both normal and hard difficulty, patrols spawning will happen no matter the light level. So everybody usually clowns on Bedrock Edition because, well, 
I mean, fair enough, not gonna lie. But this one is really, really cool. So jukebox hopper, then a chest up top. We open the chest, maybe we put this music disc in right here, a beautiful sounding one. We jump off of it, close it, and it starts playing. You notice what happened there. If you play on Java Edition, you probably do. That doesn't work like that on Java Edition. On Better Rock Edition, hoppers can actually drop discs into jukeboxes and pull them out of the jukebox when they're done playing. This is absolutely amazing, and I, I potentially, with this information, maybe done with Java Edition forever. Okay, so not exactly, but this mechanic is really, really cool. With this knowledge right here, a little bit of hoppers and some redstone expertise, you could actually set up a jukebox that, hold on, I don't really want to find out if the whole pig step copy strike thing is legit. With a jukebox, a few hoppers, a little bit of redstone, and some music discs on better Edition, you could set up a machine that continuously loops a music disc. That's probably annoying eventually, but definitely cool for a little while. All right, so unfortunately, to check this next one out, it has to be nighttime and storming, actually. Here, we have a creeper. In my inventory, we have a channeling trident right there. If we hit the creeper with the channeling trident, boom, it's a charged creeper. That's pretty cool. Now, let's say I was in, like, a snowy biome, like, like a tundra, and these strays spawned right in there. Now, let's say I was in survival. That creeper is going to blow up. If I get close enough, have to be careful here. There we go. Takes them out. And take a look at the mob heads that have dropped. No, th this is not like a troll. We have wither skeleton skulls all over the place. And yes, this will all work in survival too. Let's say I found this creeper, spawned it naturally, hit it with the trident just like that, and then I had strays. And this creeper gets up close to me and explodes just like this. Okay, do your thing. You're close enough, boy. Okay, okay, there you go, there you go. Boom, it happens again. Wither skeleton skulls every single time. This is due to a bug that currently exists in the game. It's honestly kind of crazy and insanely, insanely overpowered. Check that out. Eight Wither Skeleton Skulls now, all from charged creepers blowing up strays. That's all you have to do. Unfortunately, this mechanic is not going to work on Java Edition. Bedrock Edition only, and it's a bug, so it might go away eventually. To be honest, this next one also feels like a bug, but I'm honestly not sure if it is. So maybe you just did like a big digging project. You cleared out a lot of land, lots of grass blocks. You don't have any use for these grass blocks. Well, no big deal. Go over to a composter, and you can actually put solid grass blocks into the composter. Like, you can compost with these dirt blocks. This is kind of like insane. This seems so weird to me, and, and definitely not intended, but it does technically work. I mean, if you think about it, it is grass, but it's a literal grass block. Like, this is a solid block. I don't even understand, but it works. For the sake of example, let's say you did that trick for a long time and eventually ended up with a stack of bone meal. Then you found this random sugarcane plant growing right here, as it has been all along. You use the bone meal on the sugarcane plant and find that sugarcane actually can be bone mealed on this version of the game. Check this out. When we bone meal that, it's going to grow all the way up instantly every single time time this is a life hack that definitely absolutely makes sense i mean if you can bone meal all other plants in the game why can't you bone meal sugarcane well on better rock edition you can this is a really really nice and reliable way to get a lot of sugarcane very very quickly plant a bunch of plants bone meal them then you have a bunch more plants and continue that cycle until you're out of bone meal and you'll have a ton of sugarcane for paper in no time or technically if you think about it you can use the sugarcane to go over to a composter compost it and turn it back into bone meal and repeat the process over and over and over again it would be pretty safe to assume that nether bricks are a pretty strong thing i mean after all the, their name says bricks and unlike the smoker the the stone cutter all of those things if you try and break them by hand then you are going to be disappointed because you'll get nothing so yeah you can't break these things by hand they're definitely a strong thing uh, but uh, did you realize that these things are apparently able to be used as fuel as well now this fuel is not going to be very good as you can see we're blowing right through this stuff but apparently nether bricks are a viable fuel source like coal or or, or wood or, or charcoal or blaze rods yeah i don't understand better condition at this point is just insanely strange when would you use this well in most instances never but let's say you have a large-scale nether project like 
you've gone and cleared out a huge portion of the nether, you have a bunch of netherrack. Well, grab the netherrack and take it back to a furnace, smelt it up into nether bricks, but this time, instead of making nether brick blocks, take those nether bricks and put them back into the furnace, uh, hooked up to like a hopper system with a chest with like a bunch more nether bricks, and then, if you hate nether bricks for whatever reason, you just don't like them for building, you've repurposed your netherrack into something actually useful. I think a good way to wrap today's video up would be with a nether related life hack because after all it is the nether update still. So piglins, they're gigantic chickens when it comes to anything soul related. Soul torch, soul lantern, soul campfire, they're gone, they're out of here. Let's say though we, we didn't place those down and this was unlit, like it's literally just logs. Well, piglins are still going to be terrified of this thing right here. Let's say you're building a base in the nether and you'd like to keep piglins away, but you don't really want to use soul torches or soul lanterns because they don't fit in and you don't want the smoke particle effects either. Well, then that is insanely simple. The soul campfire unlit, hide it somewhere. The piglins should still stay away. Yeah, better edition can be a little bit weird sometimes. That's gonna do it though for today's life hacks. Which one was your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below. Road to 1000k, like, subscribe. Today, big shout out to my patrons, Cato808 and Lord Zenera. Thank you so much for the support. I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody.